SpaceX's starship development is now at an inflection point. After successfully landing SN15, the company is now ready to launch Starship into orbit. However, in order to reach orbit, Starship will need a booster. And not just any other booster, but the most powerful booster ever built in the history of launch vehicles. We are talking about the Super Heavy, the first stage that will power SpaceX's next-gen fully reusable Starship. So in this video, we'll take a brief overview of the Super Heavy booster, compare it with the other launch vehicles, and finally, take a look at the future test campaigns for the Super Heavy prototypes. So without any further ado, let's get started. The Super Heavy is massive, to say the least. With a height of 70 meters, the booster itself is as tall as SpaceX's entire Falcon 9 rocket. It will have a payload capacity of 3400 metric tons and will be powered by SpaceX's 28 sea level Raptor engines. That's one more than Falcon Heavy's 27 Merlin 1 day engines. However, this leads to a big question. Why does Super Heavy have so many engines? Isn't it better to have a smaller number of more powerful engines like Saturn V's F1? To answer this, let's assume that during a Starship launch, one of the Super Heavy's 28 Raptor engines failed during the flight. Even though it won't be a good sign, losing one Raptor will lead to a thrust reduction of only about 3.5%. This can be more or less compensated by the remaining 27 Raptors and the mission won't end up in a critical failure. However, on the other hand, if one of the 5 F1 engines for the Saturn V failed, it would effectively lead to a 20% reduction in thrust. This would inevitably lead to a critical mission failure. Such an event has actually occurred in the past with Falcon 9 during the CRS-1 mission. At T plus 79 seconds, one of the 9 Merlin engines of Falcon 9 booster experienced a sudden loss of thrust and was shut down. The onboard computers immediately readjusted the flight profile and compensated for the lost thrust. And eventually, the Dragon capsule successfully reached the International Space Station. So this just proves that having 28 engines with Super Heavy will insulate SpaceX against any engine malfunction. Sure, this might lead to some plumbing nightmare, but in the longer run, this does have its own advantages. Now, let's compare the Super Heavy booster with some of the other booster stages of current and upcoming launch vehicles. Starting with the Falcon Heavy, the most powerful launch vehicle currently in operation. With its 27 Merlin engines, the Falcon Heavy gets a thrust of about 22.8 mega newtons during liftoff. Next up, the most powerful launch vehicle ever built, Saturn V, with its 5 F1 engines on the first stage, had a thrust of 35.1 mega newtons during liftoff. NASA's upcoming SLS will be a step ahead of Saturn V. With its 4 RS-25 engines and 2 side boosters, SLS will have a massive thrust of 39.1 mega newtons. But none of these launch vehicles even come close to the Super Heavy. With the 28 Raptor engines, Super Heavy will provide a liftoff thrust of whopping 72 mega newtons. That's more than twice that of Saturn V's. This easily makes Super Heavy the most powerful booster stage ever built in the history of launch vehicles. However, what differentiates Super Heavy with these other boosters, except for Falcon Heavy, is that it will be fully and rapidly reusable. The Super Heavy booster will consist of four grid fins similar to the Falcon 9 booster. But the difference here is that the grid fins of Super Heavy will be built using welded steel, a stark contrast to the titanium grid fins of Falcon 9. The original design for the Falcon 9 grid fins were using aluminium, these aluminium grid fins used to experience the re-entry temperatures near their maximum survivability limits. In fact, some of the early grid fin designs even caught fire during re-entry and landing phases. So eventually, SpaceX decided to shift to titanium for grid fins. These new titanium grid fins not only withstands higher temperatures, but also provide better controllability to the booster during re-entry. The Super Heavy's grid fin will help the booster maintain its attitude during the re-entry and also guide the booster to the exact landing location. And as you might have already guessed, the grid fins for such a massive booster are also going to be, well, massive. For instance, the Falcon 9 grid fins are about 2 meters long and 1.2 meters wide. The super heavy grid fins on the other hand are estimated to be 7 meters long and 3 meters wide. In terms of surface area, they are about 8 to 10 times more massive than the Falcon grid fins. Apart from the grid fins, 
The super heavy booster will also consist of hot gas RCS thrusters. You can think of them as mini rocket engines used to maintain the booster's orientation during the atmospheric re-entry. The only difference here is that instead of using cryogenic methane and liquid oxygens like the Raptor engines, these hot gas thrusters will use gaseous methane and oxygen. The other type of RCS system consists of cold gas thrusters. The cold gas thrusters are just pressurized liquid propellant which is released using valves and nozzles to provide a sudden burst of thrust in order to maintain the booster's orientation. Earlier it was thought that SpaceX will use cold gas thrusters for the initial super heavy prototypes, just like how the current Starship prototypes use cold gas thrusters. However, Elon Musk recently confirmed that they are aiming to use hot gas thrusters for the first orbital class super heavy booster, BN3. Elon Musk has always fantasized about landing the booster right on the launch pad. And the initial plans for the super heavy were just that, landing right on the launch pad. However, after realizing the problem of designing landing legs for such a massive booster, SpaceX's engineers thought of something even crazier. Catching the super heavy booster using the launch tower itself. Well, I've already made a video on this channel about catching the super heavy. Do consider watching it after this one. To summarize that video, there are two main benefits of catching the booster. First of all, getting rid of landing legs would reduce the dry mass of Starship. This in turn would increase Starship's payload capacity to low Earth orbit and beyond. Secondly, this would allow Starship to achieve rapid reusability, where SpaceX can launch Starships within just a matter of hours. However, I am pretty sure that SpaceX won't attempt to catch the Super Heavy booster, at least for the initial dozen or so flights. Because if there is a landing failure, SpaceX would not only lose the booster, but also end up losing the entire launch tower, which will take a lot of time to reconstruct. Now, let's take a look at the current state of Super Heavy prototypes and the plans for the future test. As of the making of this video, SpaceX has completely manufactured only one Super Heavy prototype, which was called Booster No. 1 or BN1. BN1 was just a manufacturing pathfinder for SpaceX engineers and was quickly scrapped afterwards. The next booster, BN2, was initially going to be a full-scale prototype. The plan was to conduct a 150-meter hop test with BN2 in order to get some real-life flight data for the booster. However, after SN15's success, SpaceX decided to push for the orbital flight and the plan was quickly changed. Currently, BN2 is going to be a smaller test tank, just like Starship SN7. It will be used to check for any flaws in the Super Heavy design. The next booster, BN3, is going to be the first flight-worthy Super Heavy prototype. The plan is to use BN3 for the very first orbital flight test of Starship scheduled this year. BN3 is currently in the high bay and its various sections are currently being stacked together. Parts of BN4 have also been spotted at the manufacturing facility at Starbase. The next major upgrade in the Super Heavy's design is going to be with Super Heavy BN7. However, as of the making of this video, there is not much information about this. Super Heavy is one of the most important components of the Starship architecture. And as we have seen in this video, it is in a completely different league when it comes to the first stage boosters. If you have watched till here, I can assume that you enjoyed the content. If you did so, then please consider smashing that like button so that the YouTube algorithm can further recommend this video. For those who are new here, do consider subscribing the channel, I will be making more such videos in future. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.